penetration tests and other security type assessments. Um, so. I'm Leslie Carhart. I uh, do computer forensics for a living. So um, I'm supposed to be like, uh, let's see, Abby, but uh, hey. it doesn't really end up like that very much. I don't know, so you get pretty close. I try. I try to look at it. Like it doesn't work out that way most of the time. Um, and I've been doing it for about nine years now, uh, professionally. I'm Eric Colt, and I'm a corporate hack. Uh, so I, I do corporate defense primarily, have been for about have been for about five to six years. Uh, I was a developer before I moved into security, and it happens. Just so it's just a one minute. That's not too Chicago, we tend to focus primarily on the financial vertical for whatever reason. Uh, so yeah, I rob banks. That's my job. I'm a bank robber, uh, both digitally and physically. I prefer the physical. I enjoy the social engineering, the physical intrusion aspect of it. Uh, Coming in late, we would love to trade you a bad driven for a ticket. Yeah, yeah, bad driven for tickets up here. And then you can tell people how you better the planet. No, how you really answer. Oh. Okay, so my gloves don't work with that tough. Robert Lackey, bank robber, computer forensics, and if people knew, we'd have to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome to our panel. Uh, who, who was here last year? Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. We're back with more travesties. <laughs> That's great. Who, who and was more it? I, I assume you came back because it was great last year, or because it was a travesty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, this year, well, like Leslie and I, we try to bring different people back with us every year. We do different things. This was really cool that we actually have military dude with us. Believe it or not, the military actually does offensive security penetration testing, testing of their own systems, uh, with some incredibly intelligent people. I know we all, uh, there's a tendency to kind of laugh off the military as being well, for government work, but yeah, um, I've, I've met in the community some incredible people who came out of the military that have surprised me. Uh, he's definitely one of them. So that's really cool. Uh, and so that's us. We are hackers in real life. Um, many of us, maybe all of us, have been hackers since before we were receiving paychecks for doing so. Uh, and so uh, I think towards the end, if time willing, we usually just, it's usually me sitting in the room until they kick me out, and I do ask a hacker at the end. Yeah, we're technically an hour and a half, but we're probably going to run way over that with questions, like we do every year, so don't feel bad about after that time walking out of here to go do other things. We are not offended, but we are happy to be here next. Yeah. We totally understand Jeff comes here. Yeah. You gotta go and get up and leave. Uh, so we usually start with our fun intro video. Um, this is a cool one from a show called Limitless. You know it's Limitless. Just a couple people. A couple people. It's really fun. Um, it's canceled. It's really fun. Yeah. So we'll uh, I'll play you an intro video and then we're talking about what we're gonna do. Just look right here. The smartest people on the planet couldn't do it, man. Sounds like Clinton just threw down the gun. Stop it. I'm going to prove that there's at least a chance that you're afraid to get to tell the truth. And if you pass the security on one of those cars, I'm going to have to be a I appreciate the help. One thing. What is hacking? Seriously? Well, I mean, I know in the movies, there's usually a montage where they play really serious music, and they're just watching somebody type really, really fast, but then it says, like, server acquired, and then boom, something's hacked. Get to the walls, all that good stuff. I just don't know what happens during the typing part. Bring what the word hacking means, exactly. <laughs> so, as it turns out, 
the reason movies just show a montage, they do it that way, because hacking is boring. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't tell you about programming languages or how I got in touch with everywhere. A hacker collected this school me in basics. But really, wouldn't you just rather be watching some vines and things mm. blowing up instead? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is the that you want to do while I'm hacking? Absolutely. No <laughs> way I'm hacking Quentin's prosthetic arm. But those guys were good for the basics. I left them behind with about a week of practice. Eventually, it was up to me. Well, me and NZT. I started timing my doses so I could get hack time at night. And finally, after a bunch of time practicing and doing everything else, I think I finally got somewhere. Alright, so um, the, the, the thing we liked about that really is that they acknowledge that hacking is boring. That hacking is a lot of me sitting behind a green screen typing things. And it's only green because I set the colors to green. <laughs> it works better that way. Yeah. There's a lot of folks who have said, like, hey, you know, why, don't, why, doesn't, why doesn't someone start, like, a, a Twitch feed of someone actually hacking? It's like, you'd just be seeing them staring. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh my god, you will learn new swear words. <laughs> uh, or you get to watch us read documentation for like an hour to type like 20 characters, hit enter, go, god damn it, why did that go back to oh, yeah. the Oh yeah, read the docs for an API that's no longer implemented, but we didn't tell you. To <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it, that's what we do. It's horribly boring. Although a friend of uh, mine and Leslie's, a guy named Jack, who out of Chicago, is working on starting up a it might even stream on Twitch uh, a live hacking thing that he's going to call Security Theater. Uh, <laughs> I really like the joke plan. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and it's going to be like, hey, we picked up some really crappy Taiwanese brothers. Let's see what we can do. Uh, so keep an eye on out there, out there for that. I don't know what the status is on it. Your costume is excellent. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, so this is us. These are our Twitter handles up here. Some of us are fairly active. Some of us are insanely active. Um, you can go ahead, Andy, take pictures of anything going on up here. We're also videoing this off the road video much later. Um, we're moderately responsive. Yeah. That's enough for that. Uh, Leslie has 18,000 followers. I just wanted to point that out. <laughs> Leslie's famous, so now you've all been like basking in the glory. <laughs> He's a TSA keys guy, so any anytime you hear about your luggage locks being worthless, it's his fault. Who saw that on the news or whatever? Like the TSA key being it's released, all his fault. now you can three D print all the TSA keys. That's all his that was fault me. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> I blame the journalist. I, I, I honestly, I mean, I blame the journalist on that. We can it talk about that one later. the person who decided to put a giant picture of the key in the newspaper originally. But <laughs> <laughs> my bad. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, will, I will autograph your TSA keys locks. <laughs> open them and then autograph yeah. them once they're open. I'll teach you how to open them. There you go. Five dollars. So we have some fallacies that we talk about in, in every kind of technical TV show there's problems. You know, if you go into a medical TV show, they're blatantly wrong. If you go into like any kind of criminology show, any forensic show, they're blatantly wrong. Um, but we're forensic, we're, we're um, hacking people and computer forensic people, so that's the stuff that we notice that's blatantly wrong. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. And we see these common fallacies in TV shows and movies and video games all the time because hacking is this magical, magical thing, as Arthur C. Clarke said, indistinguishable from magic um, to a lot of people who are writing fiction. And that's not necessarily bad because we love science fiction and games too, but sometimes it's done in such a grotesquely wrong way that for anybody who knows anything about what's going on, it's just painful to watch. So our fallacies are as follows, and we'll see these throughout the clips we talk about tonight. The first one is magical malware, which is a computer virus can do anything in these TV shows or movies. They can blow up buildings, they can destroy the internet, they can kill people, they can make their robotic arms do things, um, et cetera, et cetera. And it can't be traced, it can't be reversed, and nobody knows how to stop it. Um, the second one is the many windows hack, which is the traditional hacking scene in a movie where there's like 500 
green on black windows popping up constantly on the screen and there's text scrolling in every one and somebody's typing into one of them and something's happening. It's that idea that like using the command line is itself hacking. Magical. And that yeah. you can still keep an eye on what's going on at 600 windows at the same time. Because that good of a hacker. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is not an issue. I'm not even looking. <laughs> Like the word firewall. Any of this works. The word firewall now means anything ever. <laughs> and everything is now a firewall. Go, go outside and use it today. It's fantastic. Um, sure. Having a firewall to most of our business units means that we're secure. So. So you don't go back to your office and say firewalls are magical because you saw it in TV. The third one is logical versus physical distance. It's when a person in TV show has to be in front of the computer that they're hacking or they can't possibly hack it. And it actually works conversely. Like they can't be, they can't do things they should be able to be right next to it, like shut it off. <laughs> um, and the next one is magical forensic, which is my personal favorite being what I do for a living, which is where you're in the bright blue shiny room with the blue lights everywhere, and in, within 10 minutes, you establish when the person was hacked into everywhere they have connected to in the last year, and uh, also know their lifetime history and their financial history from the one phone that they carry from in their pocket. screenshot from yeah. the security camera. It's the, the, it's the security, yeah, yeah. security phone. Yeah. Tonight, cyber spaceships are like the scene from Hackers the movie. And keep in mind this presentation every year we do the last year, the past year of media of fiction. So we're not going to go back to like war games or hackers or anything or the Matrix. I'm um, sorry, they're they're always fun, but we've talked about this before. Because that's what Q&A is for. Oh, yeah. we're, we're, we're happy to run we can, this. We can run this afterwards, but this our our picks today are out of the past year. Cyber spaceships is when like the internet is represented by like flying through space, like the movie Tron or something. <laughs> like, you're hacking and there's like things exploding in 3D rendering and like that's hacking and yes it still happens and yes we're gonna see an example of it today. Yeah. <coughs> the uh, the logical versus physical distance I think comes up a lot. And, yeah, and that's a huge like thing. whenever you're watching TV shows where someone is hacking or computer things are happening happening. Ask the question, why don't they just turn it off? And see how often that applies to the situation. You were right next to this computer, why can't you pull the plug out of yeah. the wall? Well, why do you need to unnecessarily infiltrate this building for the purpose of hacking the computer? Do you yeah. really need to do that, especially since it's working on the internet? So we kind of do this in like a, a, a good, bad, ugly, bizarre kind of rundown. Uh, and we start with the good, <laughs> because those, those are usually the least funny. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so we were like, hey, you did it right. Well, this is really good technically. It's still enjoyable to watch. And you, you have done your technical research correctly. Yeah. Um, and and uh, what we've been noticing over all this year is that the good and the ugly are still very substantial, but the middle ground has gone away. So we're seeing mostly people who are, A, really starting to give a crap about doing things the right way. Uh, or be people who have just resigned to definitely not giving a crap. <laughs> and why does this matter? It's because you guys do go work in corporate offices and agencies and places that have computers after this, and then you've watched these shows and you have this perception of hacking and computer security that's based on these TV shows and these intellectual properties that you've looked at all year. And you base your decisions in business on possibly subconscious things that you've learned from these TV shows. So. Yeah. I, I mean, there's, I an talk to those being, people. there's an importance to being entertained, but there's also an importance to people actually having some idea what's really physically possible. Yeah. There's nothing worse than walking into a C level briefing and somebody says, Well, I saw this on CSI Cyber, why can't you do it? <laughs> 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 yeah, that's what happens when you have a all the time. And that woman's a psychologist. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yeah. that's true. Well, yeah. If you've yeah. been there, then you're then you're laughing with us because it's like, ah, I'm dying. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start with the good. The good right. stuff, so things that we like. You, I bet you have 
that you know he's expected to see Stranger Things on here because it's like takes place in the 80s. Yes. Stranger Things. Who's, who's been watching Stranger Things? Stranger Things. Yeah. 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 So we actually really like this from a head perspective. Yeah, and you probably have to expect what's going on in the scene, but I'll play it and we'll discuss it. Spoilers. Just spoiler warning on everything that's going to happen on this panel yes. because we're going over stuff that happened in the last year. All of these videos are things that happened in videos. <laughs> <laughs> That suspenseful music, very big part of my job. Yeah. <laughs> Could we kill the lights? So it's, oh yeah, don't worry. Kill the lights. There's not. I'll, I'll play it through and then we'll walk through it again anyway. <laughs> Oh, uh, I mean, personal safety aside. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, that's my job. Sorry, I have to go out the computer. Hello, Dr. Brenner asked me specifically. Okay, how else can I go in here? It's Jim Hopper. Chief Jim Hopper. Yeah, I've got Jim Hopper. This also happens all the time. <laughs> Jim Hopper is the chief of the Chief Jim Hopper. Yeah, I So first off, I want to point out that, that Leslie is, is uh, a sharpshooter and trained in disarming assailants, so whatever, anybody who's laughing at that. Um, no, liability is an issue. Or uh, So what's going on here is something I do a ton in my penetration test. Uh, a lot of times it's way easier to just get into the building and access their network internally than to break in through a website or something. And, and uh, what he's doing here for, for uh, most of this, I think I lost it, is um, like right here, you notice he literally just like tailgates his way in. It's right before the door closes, he grabs it. That is my MO. That is what I do exactly. And I love that like they didn't have him like jump the people walking out, punch them in the face and take their clothes. It's just like a quick, like, grab the door and just stroll on so, out. anyone work for a large company? Have you had to sit through the annual security awareness training where they tell you, always check people's badges? And no. Okay. So I see some, I see some shaking no, I see some nodding yes. They train you to bribe doctors, but not to, not to do that. He gets paid massive, he gets paid decent amounts of money. <laughs> Yeah, and then what's great is I put in my report that like you need to do some tailgating training. Like this is a horrible, rampant problem. This is how if you didn't have a tailgating problem, I would not have been able to get anything. That's the first way I got in. They go, okay, and I come back in six months, and like it's just the same garbage. <laughs> and it's a lot of this. Yeah, oh, but I, I man, let me tell you, like as somebody with like you know moral boundaries, it hurts. To have to like keep doing this to people. I would rather you were secure. I'm trying to help you. And it hurts like when I write this big 60 page report and then I come back and you have all the same problems. And I go, why did you make me waste my time on this? Uh, and then pull the door for the double. <laughs> and then, like, and I, I have totally done this where I just duck around a corner, duck in an empty conference room because someone's coming. This is nerve wracking. <laughs> this is insanity. This is like bonkers. Like you see in the movies and TV shows where there's just like, Hide behind the corner. Pop back on Superstar. No, you're in that room just sweating profusely. <laughs> because if you get caught, like this whole thing is over and you've wasted your day. Um, it helps if you're an actor. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of social engineering is acting. Um, I don't know if I would have opened the curtain with a biohazard. So <laughs> this is probably a good counter to like. <laughs> but I will say that the number of doors that say do not open that don't have a lock on them is actually pretty high. <laughs> and the sign is what it 
the deterrent is oh, right. necessarily. Or the, this door must remain closed at all times. <laughs> There's nothing enforcing that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this seems to me like this is probably a pretty good counter against social engineering because like I, that's where I'd be like, no, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's saving the planet so, from the government. <laughs> uh, and so then all this goes on and obviously um, rarely are guns involved in my, in my scenario. <laughs> Oh yes, I've been arrested a number of times. It is part of the job. And there are some of our, there are some of our peers who have some extremely entertaining stories about their run-ins it's with an expectation. law enforcement, guns, law enforcement and guns. <laughs> yeah, and it's, we have I I have most of us have a thing we call jail, uh, get out of jail free card, which is a written signed letter from the owner of the organization saying that I am allowed to be doing what I'm doing. And you keep two of them: one you keep in your pocket, and one you keep in your sock. Because what's going to happen is the first one you pull out of your pocket, the security guy is going to read it and go, well, this is fake, and he's going to throw it out. And then when the police show up, you got nothing. <laughs> so the one in your sock you keep until the police show up, and then the police will do due diligence and call the number that's on there and vet that you're actually supposed to be there. And I've been in that situation three times. <laughs> and that's not bragging. Like, that's failure. Um, so then, yeah, guns, etc. Uh, he steals the badge physically here from this guy. Um, badge theft is a thing that I do quite often, not at gunpoint. <laughs> it's also something you generally do surreptitiously. Most people have like the clip-on badges with the retractable cords and they wear them on their pants pockets. You can flip those with one finger and take people's badges all day. Uh, also, like if there are RFID badges, I have cloners where I can just like dry hump somebody accidentally in the hallway <laughs> and copy their card. Uh, so we've got this guy's yeah. accidentally. There was some <laughs> Oops, it's all with it's I have it in the letter that I'm allowed to do that. <laughs> so then finally like he gets in with the badge and everything, but then he does like he now he's inside the door and he does this nonsense a lot of shows. Where he like shoots the card reader to make sure nobody can get in. All he did there was make sure he can never get out. <laughs> like now he's trapped in this biohazard area. <laughs> That's not how this badge readers work. So like up until then, even given the fact that this is a highly like know. covert government facility. We didn't know. Yeah. It was the 80s. Know. And no one knew about that. We can write it down because he didn't know that's how the badge readers worked. And like even like the dudes pulling the guns, that might be valid in this scenario given like the facility that they're in. Uh, so like overall, this was really good. I've done all of this sans gun. <laughs> <laughs> so credit for credit's due to the security team. They've got a guy monitoring the cameras. Oh yeah, sure. And so, yeah, he wasn't spotted physically in the hallway, so we caught him on the cameras and showed up behind him and go, what are you doing? There's guns here. <laughs> yeah, so Stranger Things really doing it right without going over the top. Uh, you know, even the guns are kind of firewood, so that's just really cool. Um, we haven't talked about books a lot in the past, uh, which is kind of our fault, so we tried to work a few books into this slide deck. So let me, uh, let me ask you, who here has either tried to write a book or has succeeded in writing a book? Anyone? A couple hands. All right, so, all right, full disclosure, I know Misha, he's, he's kind of a pal of mine over the years. Uh, this is his first novel. And I've had in the last year, I've had a couple people I know who have handed me books and I've had mixed reactions with them. I was incredibly impressed by the work he did. One, we'll start with the plot that he writes it's a shadow run campaign. Okay? He doesn't overreach, and his characters are like, holy crap, that's the Decker. That's the Rigger. You've got two street samurais. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this picture. That's a Decker. He's got his deck on his back. Who plays shadow run? No, no, no. This is the Rigger. Oh, he looks this like a Decker. <laughs> It looks like he's got the deck. It's a lot of fun, and, and here's the thing. So when it comes to the hacking parts, there are some hacking parts, and it's done in kind of uh, a little bit, uh, I think it's late 90s. But all the hacking that he does, and he does not work in security. He did it all. He researched everything and went through it piece by piece. So as an author, especially as a first-time author, someone who is that dedicated to saying, you know what, I don't want it to just be techno battle, to actually sit down, you can figure this stuff out. It's not all techno battle, right? So this is stuff where he kind of worked out how does phishing work? And there's a much greater expectation for a book because of the level of detail than there is for a TV show. You want to make a TV show condensed and entertaining. 
for a book, you've got time to expose on how things are done technically. And if you get them wrong, you have that exposition, people are going to notice a lot more. Right. One of the cool things he did about it, sorry, I didn't mean to cover One of the cool things he did in his writing method was that, like, is anyone like a developer? Have you used GitHub? Mm -hmm. A few hands up there. GitHub is like source control. It's how, like, when you're writing a program, this is how you say, oh, this is how I did, I've done the next version and I can actually track it. So if I screwed it up, I can go back. He, he wrote his book in GitHub. So as he made changes, he'd check them into GitHub. And then he'd kind of do like A-B testing with, with the people with, well, with, you know, this trusted friends who were reading it. Like, is this better? No, it's not better. Okay, go back to the last one. What can I do better? So it's just a very cool, he, he took a lot of ideas from software to write a book, and it worked. I honestly had no expectation, but like, I, I read through a lot of books. I ended up giving him like four out of five stars on this. It was just a fantastic read. And we talked about Shadowrun for a long time after that. I was like, holy crap, this is a show. Yeah, it was cool that he, he wrote it in that nerdy way where he used GitHub like we all do yeah. to actually like get to the end of That's still like one of our archetypical things yeah. hackers. Shadowrun's an excellent game. We're not talking about it that much this time around because it's way outside of our window of talking about things, but... Yeah, it kind of came out, what, 80s, late 80s, Shadowrun? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but got a lot of hacking correct, like even by today's standards. Um, yeah, moving on. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, the Amazing World of Gumball. Like, I know you guys are huge fans of this. Yeah. Yeah. You saw this one coming. <laughs> no, 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 no. Has anybody actually watched The Amazing World of Gumball? And there are people with kids and stuff, yeah. Okay. Oh, really? This is an excellent cartoon. It's one of those kids' cartoons that's super fun for adults. Uh, and Leslie had found this scene. Was it you who actually sent it across this? Oh, somebody sent it to me. Like, somebody on the Twitter sphere. was like, this scene is incredible. And I was like, yeah, right. And, and we're all like, okay, let's just watch it. Yeah. You can watch the lights. Lights? Yeah. You can probably yeah. throw the lights Thank down. you for operating the lights Thank for us. You. That's amazing. You're awesome. How on it? Baby girl, tell her to get that. Don't worry, I have my ways. exactly how she got those doors open. Um, it's, it is very explicit, correct detail, detail discussing um, uh, mass, mass storage hacking, uh, including bypassing security control, by, bypassing monitoring uh, through uh, routing all your traffic through offshore proxies, bypassing intrusion defense systems. Uh, like there's all of the ter technical terms in this were used in the appropriate context and are applicable to something and the same cuts. But I, like, I suspect, based on where the scene cuts, that there wasn't act actually like a full minute of dialogue here that explains eventually how that led into the doors being open. Whether she was like modifying files on like the network attached storage to be able to allow like multiple user access or something. Like everything there was crazy when Leslie showed me this. Like I flipped out. <laughs> it's so good. This was like the easiest clip we voted into this presentation. Yeah. <laughs> we were all like, yeah, that's it exactly what like, we were just like, we're done here. So thank you whoever wrote that. And the other character's yes. reaction to that entire <laughs> diatribe. <laughs> <laughs> and the fact that they opened with H-A-C-K hat, like a mockery of all the TV shows. And then the guy's like, is that really, is that what we're really doing? And she's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, thank you. All the way around. Like, they covered all the bases. Could have just handled that better with the, wouldn't you rather, rather watch vines of things exploding? But very well done. Yes. yes. It's just another surprising thing we're not expecting. Another one we love. Uh, moving on. So who, who's seen this movie Dope? Oh, I, just a couple, a couple hands, a couple hands. I only watched this movie after I saw this clip and I was like, this is hilarious. Yeah, I really liked this movie. Uh, it's, uh, I think the context you need for this video clip here is it's a bunch of kids who are trying to sell some dope. Um, I think it's uh, Molly. And, uh, oh yeah, uh, 
disclaimer, there's going to be some discussion of drugs and drug selling and taking in this panel. There's some very mild, brief, vaguely identifiable sexuality going on in places, so just to, uh, it's, it's... It's all network TV. Television. Yeah, it's all from television. There's no upright porn, sir. I'm <laughs> glad the mixing board while that's playing, because it seems like you have the travel turn up instead of volume. Oh, yeah, it's... Really. Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> and then you the lights. Alright, see you the mic on and off. That's probably good. Yeah, you can turn the treble down on the mic channel. If you can see what it is. Okay, so uh, here, I'll play the clip for you guys. Website. Well, not by name, he doesn't name it by name, but which is the dark website where basically literally anything was sold. It's essentially Amazon, but full of crime. <laughs> <laughs> like when he's talking about, oh, you just buy guns, children, drugs, whatever. Literally look yeah. like Amazon, like put to my cart, buy things. Yeah, it like, had user reviews. And, <laughs> you know, it had user that, reviews of marijuana. Yeah. <laughs> Other sites have return policies. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. They uh, these are just like normal e commerce. Because they are competing with each other. There are so many sites selling these things that like they want to be famous for having, you know, if I'm gonna drop hundred K and some credit card numbers, I wanna make sure I'm getting it from a source that's gonna deliver me some that are at least 60, 70 percent valid, which is a really good percentage for buying credit card numbers. Uh, and so like they have reputations they maintain, and so they have return policies. Like it's insanity. For you, there's you, like if your heroin is not up to snuff. <laughs> yeah, four four stars. You know, like it's like our packaging was a little wonky, but the product was good. Like <laughs> this is a thing. This is what's going on in darknet. So it is. Yeah, they're talking about. Then they talk about using the tool. Who's familiar with the Tor browser? Who's at least used that even just for general web sort of thing? Um, cool. So the Tor browser, T O R. Uh, works essentially by funneling all your traffic through offshore proxies. <laughs> uh, it, uh, it, it basically does that. It has you hop through a bunch of other people's computers it's essentially. It's all volunteer to be torn notes, and they, means they set up their inter internet connection for other people to be able to route out through. And it's originally designed for people who live in like repressive regimes and stuff who don't want to be monitored by their governments. Or journalists. Who don't or want journalists who don't want to be monitored by their governments. Who don't want to be so basically, you send your traffic through a special proxy, so it goes out one pipe, and then it comes out all those other people's internet connections. Yeah. So that when somebody tries proxy. to figure out who's doing what, they just see traffic coming out of different countries all over the world out of these four exit nodes. Which they know are four exit nodes, so they can't, they don't hold those people responsible because they know it's not actually their traffic. Um, now there's some interesting legal challenges going on lately with that, but that's... And there's technical uh, challenges as well. It yeah. seems like certain government agencies probably have at this point figured out around the world to figure out how to figure out who's using for. Yeah, I was going to bring that up. And like doing like traffic analysis and shaping to figure out what your traffic is. Even for the most good. part, it's better than not using for if you're doing something that will get you shot in the head for. Right. Yeah. Now, now recently, I I am not a lawyer, but one uh, point. You told you were a lawyer. I was taking your money at the time. <laughs> uh, one one of the recent decisions I can tell you about is that uh, in, a, in a case decision, uh, 
the FBI made the claim that by using the Tor router, you were essentially waiving your uh, right to privacy when it comes to your IP address. So if you are currently under suspect by the FBI of basically anything, by using it with whatever installment they or involvement they have, this is the, the kind of technical we don't know their exact capabilities with respect to Tor, they said, well, by the fact that you're using Tor, you're entrusting your traffic already to bounce around inside this network. Oh, so you're handing your traffic to a bunch of the people you don't to know. A bunch of people so you're already waving your back. Therefore, you do your not privacy. have an expectation of privacy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that legal argument has held up in court. So oh, it's one of these interesting things where you don't know if you want to do it on the back of Oh, that's true, Greg. That's one of the biggest downsides to Tor is like you don't know that the FBI themselves is not running a Tor exit node, which they might very definite. They're off one point. Hey, it's better than nothing. Probably not the best password anymore. Yeah, use Tor from your public library, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but coming back to the clip. I have friends who work for Tor. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's that same yeah. argument. Yeah, I'll fight them. AT&T, Verizon. Yeah, I'm, 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 not the service. Service. I'm not I'm not myself like putting it forward. I'm just saying I know that has held up in court. Yeah. 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 Coming back to the clip, it's amazing to see some, you know, Essentially, on film, a group of kids who have had this level of savvy. One TV show last year that talked about Tor and about the dark web in a fairly accurate way, and there hasn't really been anything other than this since. So. Yeah, go play with Tor. Tor.org, I think. Yeah. Yeah, T O R. Install on your computer. It's fun. It's weird. Learn about it. Their website's mm -hmm. really good at explaining to the layman what's going on. And Tor is established purpose, which is people escaping government by government oppression and you know, criminal oppression in other countries. Yeah, it bypasses like uh, the Great Chinese Firewall where they're filtering yeah. content. People who want to just talk to their family who live outside of the country but they're not allowed to tour masks that traffic yeah, off in some cases. As well as yeah. Service. And then they talk about bitcoins and using bitcoins to buy things. Who's familiar with bitcoins? I feel like every year is yeah, it's just this week. Yeah. yeah. Who who yeah. heard about things this week with all the bitcoin theft going on? The reaction is terrible. Yeah, I just this stops checking my prices. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, Bitcoins is still, for the most part, a very anonymous way of purchasing things. There's also some interesting traffic shaping going on with identifying who's spending Bitcoins, but nothing super a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally great political scene. Uh, um, that's one. Yeah, so last good clip. No, we uh, we are not paid off to feature anything in. <laughs> it's, it's ugly that this is good. Yeah. <laughs> this is for us, but it's copying one of our friends' work. So yes. Bear with us. So what goes on here relates to some research. I didn't look into that. Watch this scene. Yeah. It's neat stuff. Handiwork to catch? Mm, that's the problem. 
The only digital dust left by the target on Barrett's router is the MAC address of his device he used. Yeah, which doesn't help much. It's very tough to find a device that only has a MAC address. Like having a fingerprint that's not in a database. Well, maybe we can find him through his patterns of life and behavior. What was the total value of all items stolen from the Barrett home? Less than 600 bucks. And the other houses? No more than four grand total. Okay, that is a lot of work for a little return. It doesn't make any sense when he's sitting at something so much more valuable. Yeah, so um, this seems kind of far-fetched, like, oh, yeah, making a doll talk to a little girl who's going to go and just do things for you. If you're considering, you know, a four-year-old, a five-year-old um, with very active imaginations and being very playful, that's kind of valid. If they're a doll, they have a little doll who they've been told to play with by their parents. It's like, hey, can you do this? Can you stand on your head? Can you can you do jumping jacks or whatever? And then the doll goes, or is can your you, mom home? Is your mom home? Can you open the back window? Like, there's a, that's kind of plausible that you're going to be able to convince a very uh, a malleable person to be able to do something like that. Um, so that aside, uh, uh, technically, all the things they mentioned in here with uh, you know, the only thing being left in the logs on that home router is a MAC address. That's totally valid for home router equipment. Like all, most home networking equipment doesn't log anything. Uh, the best you'll get is the MAC address, which is a unique identifier for the device that connected to it. But like he said, there's no database of those things. So, so it's not being spoofed. Yeah, and if you're not making that MAC address in the first place. Um, the, they're, they're showing some kind of uh, cyber spaceship garbage about like yeah, cracking I mean, the, the, the WEP. Definite, definite cyber going on, but yeah. the research itself. Yeah, uh, this is, is totally valid. By a of ours. Uh, WEP password encryption, which I don't think is used anymore on most home routers, is insanely easy to crack. So they talk about word driving, which is where you sit at someone's outside someone's home, pick up their Wi-Fi, try to crack the password to it. That's all. This with WEP, which is shown here, it's incredibly easy. We're talking seven to ten seconds. So that's a real thing. I doubt that would be the attack would be really approached, but it's possible. Yeah, everything is plausible. The attack on the dog. The attack on the dog, uh, we know for a fact, is very plausible because we've seen it done. Uh, it's a Barbie doll. And it's actually named Hello Barbies. It's a product that was released about a year ago, and it does exactly what they said in the CSI Cyber video. It, it has a cloud attached to it, and when the kid talks to it, it goes out to the cloud. It's like your uh, Amazon Echo. It functions, which has the same security concerns, by the way. It uh, takes your question and sends it out to the cloud and then returns an answer. Now, anywhere that you can intercept that, you can tamper with the submission to the server or from the server in response. So any of those products like that that provide a voice query and answer, the query is not normally being analyzed and responded to on your local device. It's normally being sent out to the internet to the cloud somewhere. Yeah, I mean, look how tiny this thing yeah. is. There's no AI going on. So this when you can interject, if you can imagine in the middle there and interject yeah. into that conversation, you can make that device listen to or say anything you want. And it can yeah, this is... Uh, That's why none of us own Amazon Echoes. Yeah. Or Hello Barbies. Or Hello Barbies. Or Hello Barbies. <laughs> the VTech hack. The v, that was another one, uh, the VTech hack. That was a breach, though, where they had, they were recording everything the children had said. And they were looking at the pictures. Yeah. 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 You will never buy anything that does that kind of voice recognition. Yeah. So, so smart TVs also, a lot of times, will have an always-on microphone. Samsung. Was it Samsung that came out and suggested you don't say anything private? Yeah. Uh, no, it was a start to comment about the attack, but... I uh, no, it was a gentleman uh, in the back. I was against against uh, baby monitors and other things. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We, we cry about that every day when we go. Yeah, I had a friend who used last year to scan and found so many baby monitors and other devices that yeah. were just loose. Baby monitors, uh, home baby security monitors cameras. Are hideously yeah. 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 So Siri is a little bit more complicated. Um, it does function in the same way. Um, it's generally. It's yeah. They put a lot of effort into the security of it. However, it's the same concept. The same All it takes concept. is one OA, one person to find vulnerability. Yeah, it's I don't not disagree. a third-rate product from who knows where. Um, yeah, it's at least from the technology company versus with some Mattel. <laughs> so, yeah. so somewhat similar to the Siri thing. Um, 
for a while there was an Xbox commercial where someone was like talking to their Xbox Live, telling them to turn stuff on or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, the problem was that the Xbox Live at the time would hear the commercial being played in the speakers <laughs> and turn itself on in result of what was being played on the television. <laughs> it's still echo has the same problem. They ran, a, they ran a Christmas commercial. It's trivial to turn them on so that they're yeah. listening. So a friend of mine actually, they contacted through the Amazon chat uh, customer service deal. They said, like, hey, how do I stop my Amazon Echo from playing this Christmas carol every time this commercial comes on? <laughs> and it, and, and the, the fellow on the other end of the line was very frank with him. He's like, look, it, as soon as I find that out, I would love to let you know. <laughs> I'm going to at home, too, and I'm going to tell you. You're a ticket number 67,000. <laughs> Yes. I, I'm, we are all a little bit tinfoil hat, just full disclosure, being in the job that we're in, but even at the low end of tinfoil hat, I would avoid any product that's always on the screen. Yeah. Because even if you trust the company and the product, uh, it's only a matter of time before that company is breached. All companies will be breached, all information will be leaked. Uh, who knows how long they store that. And it's one thing like if you're talking about a tech company like Amazon or Apple that puts a lot of money into security. Uh, it's another one we're talking about, like your oh, the, thermos, the thermostat in your house, which is built by an industrial company who has no security team to begin with, and they, they just go, cool, it works, we're done, and they ship it. And now we know every time you leave your home to go on vacation. Yeah, who knows, like, who can vouch for how much, uh, you know, your four-year-old talks about what daddy's private life is like to strangers. Like, little kids talk a lot, and now they're telling them their dolls, and that information is being transmitted over the internet. Uh, this picture here is again, uh, I just realized we're mentioning Jacku twice on this panel. Yeah. A friend of ours from Chicago, Jacku, who does a lot of things like this. This is him reverse engineering the Hello Barbie. Uh, and the that cut news covered and then turned into a CSI cyber. So yeah. Exciting for so that's, that's why it's cool. Like, I think he did. And he, he, he presented at a conference and he brought it in this like big metal pelican case where he opens it up. Barbie. Like, it was just this Barbie doll. It's like we reveal to you. We apologize for the like traumatizing image of the. <laughs> yeah. well, like, most of that is, is he, like this is all reverse engineering stuff. This is all uh, kind of pins that clamp. These are clamped onto tiny pins inside the logic chips and things like that. This is all, everything outside of here is his stuff. The Barbie doll has a very tiny board inside of it. And I only point that out to, to point out that it's not doing much. Literally everything that the Barbie doll interacts with is sent yes. off to the internet Wireless crossing and comes and back. Microphone. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Wireless chip, microphone, tiny processor to handle what's going on, a yeah. little bit of an OS, everything else goes to the internet. And that's what's going on. Nothing is being done local inside that Barbie doll. Some, some server in Taiwan has all of your information now. So you're saying Barbie's kind of vacuous? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, onto the bad. Yeah. That's more fun. Yeah, yeah. all right. We can start laughing now. <laughs> it's okay to laugh. Right, who was the vision? <laughs> oh my god! Wow. Wow. So I don't know if you know this, but like when they started doing the, the, the first batch of content, like they would put on a weekly basis a YouTube video to say, oh, here's those weekly missions we're sending you on. The division takes place in like a post apocalyptic New York that's been described by disease and that's all. Yeah. It's Tom Clancy. Hooray! Rush is the bad guy. <laughs> Incoming transmission. Summon into the senior remote control center. Tom, someone has remotely attacked my system. I bet the staff is trying to trace my location. This type of infiltration is a bad idea. The emergency is reaching critical to the levels. I'm on my peanuts. I'm on my peanuts. System so they can find out where we are. <laughs> the cooling system's gonna make all of your systems fry, dude. They don't care where you are now. Yeah, right. <laughs> You're already done. My job as a pen tester, I do almost all in 
the agents remote unless I'm like literally trying to break into buildings. Like I like I'm attacking systems in the Ukraine and shutting down cooling systems. Like I don't care where the hell you are. <laughs> why, why, why is it relevant? And what I love is that like he's worried about like all the security systems failing. Well, the, the huge AI ISEC is still running. Everything else is overheating, but never mind the massive processing power required to prior to run this AI. Like, yeah, that's fine. Everything else is going to fail first. Yeah, his like AI stupid... telling him that they're overheating. His like stupid, you know, network defenses are like, are, are what are going down because of the overheating, but somehow the AI is like, oh, no problem, man, we're, we're good here. Yeah, he's worried about his intrusion detection system. He's already detected the intrusion. <laughs> he's not worried about an intrusion prevention system. That's well, already well, failed. Well, okay. yeah. <laughs> All the intrusion de detection system does is det detects an intrusion and goes, hey, uh, somebody should look at this. <laughs> so we're good here. So that system can go down now. We're fine. <laughs> and now, like, now the time has come for him to do his job <laughs> in stopping the intrusion, which, again, at the very least, is as easy as him just turning something off. So we have some misuse of term terminology here, and we also have the issue with logical and visible distance. Yeah, this is this is bad. Also, like if the IDS goes down, it should like fail closed if yeah. if he's that worried about it, and then nobody can get it anyway. This is this is just that's not how things work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he at least used terms in the proper context. But like this is if if I got a call like this from some guy, I'd be like, you're on your own, man. <laughs> <laughs> is there someone else there I could talk to? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, listen, I'm coming down there, but it's just so I can do your job for you. <laughs> uh, moving on to Leslie's I other homegirl. Home other homegirl, Pen Penelope Garcia, who also fails miserably every single time. <laughs> and every single time I go to a family gathering, it's like, oh, so you do the same job as Penelope? <coughs> um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Stop asking me questions. That's what I do. I cry a lot and have cleavage. <laughs> Oh, we got no audio on this one? Do you have the computer Oh, hang on, I have my speakers on. Your speakers on. Computers, Leslie! <laughs> <laughs> Inherently illegal today, in the last 10, 20 years, it has been used for 
for almost entirely illegal purposes, and a law enforcement agency would never use one in the context she's talking about. The concept of using 12 coordinates is like <laughs> ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense. Well, and for the purpose of anonymity, like, yeah, one button that is fine. Like, 12. No, that's... It's like they almost like we're just searching for a term there and they just plugged it in and then everybody yeah. who knows what a button no, no. is like... And so what you can rent botnets and for not too much money, uh, renting 12 and just controlling 12 and using them to conduct basic investigatory <laughs> searches <laughs> is insanity. <laughs> like she needs to get written up just for like doing her job. That's a gross, that's a gross yeah. misappropriation that's of law enforcement funding. Oh, that's, that's an illegal yeah, misappropriation that's of funding. That's what really struck us here. It's not just the misuse of the term, but the fact that they're talking about something that would be incredibly illegal, like scandalous in law enforcement and legal terms. Yeah. It and was very dramatic, though. It was the music was like She's crying. She's clearly crying more than what? I mean, if it had stopped there, and she was like, I used to buy it, I'm sorry. I mean, that's like something you should look out for in your writing and, and developing anything that has hacking in it. Is the thing that you're talking about a legal, a law abiding person doing grossly illegal? Yeah, any evidence gathered through this process is worthless. <laughs> you can't use this. It would be in court. inadmissible in court, yeah. yeah. It would be inadmissible, yeah. and then also there would be investigation laws against you and your agency. So Good work, I mean, everyone. <laughs> Things wrong. What do you think things wrong in that context? That like this person would be on the chipping dude for breaking the, the the law and uh, defacing the organization in the process. That's that's pretty bad. Yeah, this is literally a public scandal. This is insanity, and she also doesn't know what she's doing. Yeah, she's this high up in this organization. <laughs> that's what scandal is. That's what scandal is. They couldn't find anything else. We are here for that. Well, that's true. I know that. Sorry. It was the drug test. time recruiting security yeah. talent because there is a, a, a significant pay gap between what public sector pays like and hack. what corporate hacks like me can earn. It's the pay gap, it's the drug testing, and it's the dress code. And yeah. also the ability yeah. to see the dress code. Do you think this is okay to walk around at the FBI office? No, I hope so. It's inappropriate. Pretty bad. Our can't would tell you, but would have to kill you first. And Frank could probably at least shed some light on that. Yeah. So I may have spent a brief period of time working at the FBI, and the dress code was actually suit and tie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tie every day and haircut. Yeah. No. Oh no. There's a reason I didn't last one. Yeah. Pretty proper haircut. I mean, I like ties and haircuts, but. Do we? I have, I have okay, a person of interest next. Is that what you want? Uh, oh, no, yeah, we have two more. We have two more. Oh, the person of interest is really short. <laughs> yeah, this is a short one. Let's have fun. I just saw the bullet that stretched into its second day of financial markets. Plunge, sending the world's economy into turmoil. The catastrophic malware of the ice time virus by security experts continues to proliferate as systems across the world are experiencing its effects. is there's this magical malware that is managing to shut down pretty much everything it touches regardless of what it is. Uh, and so like on the surface, you might think like, oh, that's why they picked it as bad because that's not a thing that happens because all computers are like different and you need different malware to affect different things. Um, we kicked this around for a bit and decided that there's actually some good conversation that can come out of this because uh, specifically in this episode, this malware is affecting critical civil infrastructure, your street lights, traffic lights, uh, your train systems, your power grids, things like that. And um, we're on the verge of accidentally, intentionally creating a universal infrastructure that ties all of those things together that runs on the using the same languages. Uh, we're, 
there has been a huge uptick in what's SCADA and ICS, which is basically what all these things are. Uh, industrial, industrial, control industrial control systems. Yeah. Uh, and, and Connecting your around. normally not network things to computers so that you can remotely access them and control them as a, a mass group of things, like your traffic lights. Or the thermostat in your home, yes. which is why those things are highly insecure in most cases. Uh, because they're built by industrial companies who build machines that do things and do those things really well. They don't do stuff like security, things like peripheral stuff that's not directly related to the task at hand. And they tend to be very vulnerable, not just in terms of security, but just from the delicacy of the item that is well, yeah, I mean, a lot of these, a lot of these vendors can, you know, they have valves that will dump X amount of gallons of chemical A into vat B. They'll make sure that you know does it in a very precise manner. But it's like a one or a zero. It's dumping chemicals or it's not dumping chemicals. There's no mention of security around the entire project because the assumption is, if you're in front of there, if you're in the chemical plant pushing the button, you probably know what you're doing. So. Yeah, but if you're in, in, in the network between where that button is and the chemical dump, virtually, you can also send that signal and have no idea what you're so doing. So I learned how to hack traffic lights last March. I went to a class on hacking traffic lights because it was fun. And uh, within like, uh, I'd say 11 hours, we were all making the traffic lights light up the wrong colors and like light up green both directions at the same time. And it was just so trivial. It Did you get them to dance floor with music though? No, <laughs> I should have done that. That's, why, why that you seems there? to me. You should have been there to tell me to do that. I was busy actually having traffic lights. <laughs> uh, not in America. Uh, yeah, and so we're we're on the verge of actually creating this infrastructure that uses all these similar languages and commands, but doesn't have security built around it. And we're literally seeing this uh, in real life. I just car stuff. Car stuff. That's a good one. Yeah, everyone's seen all the car hacking, right? Yeah, all, all of the systems in the car are. There's no need to authenticate, you know, the gas pedal to accelerate, you know, to the engine or anything because they're assuming the only thing that's going to be setting the gas command is the gas pedal. Why would I authenticate the gas pedal? Well, in the in the uh, because I'm also a gas pedal. In the machine <laughs> app, what they discovered is that like the uh, the audio system was somehow connected to the engine. Why is your radio connected to your engine? <laughs> So you get to have one single infrastructure, right? We started about firewall means everything. I mean, a lot of your apparently not if you make cars. A lot of your car computers. If you raise your hand, if you own a GM car, General Motors, a GM, Ford, Ford, Chevy, Chevy, Saturn. Ford's not GM. Ford. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. That was a gross, gross mistake. <laughs> seeing how fast you accelerate. And they're, they're gathering, gathering in, very, in a very insecure way back to themselves. The, uh, the progressive one you actually have to upload via. Yeah. No, um, progressive actually has a has a SIM card that it uses. Oh, they're doing cellular now. Yeah. Oh, well done. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the, the reason why we said that was bad, that to update, yeah, yeah. was yeah. not that it was impossible to create malware for everything. Yeah. It was that right now it's, it's technically complicated. 
to create malware for everything. But it's not, techni it's not technically unfeasible for there to be malware that impacts all the devices that are shown in that clip. Yeah. In right now, it's complex to distribute that malware in a way that affects all those systems. But in the future, that may not be the case. The, the, same, the same methodology that Leslie learned on how to control traffic lights can be directly applied to the chemical pumps that control. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, controlling how slow the pumps dump chemicals into your lake. Yep. And there's something about malware that's also true about regular software, uh, which is that the more complicated it needs to be, the more likely it is to fail. Right? If you ever heard about Stuxnet, that was a big news cycle. We found Stuxnet because it had grown too large and too complicated, and they overstepped their own parameters. And all of a sudden, now you have a, an antivirus company in Bulgaria who just discovered the thing, and it <coughs> kind of snowballed from there. right? But it was only really discovered because they, they, it, it grew too large, too complicated, and they started making mistakes. They got greedy. <laughs> so uh, we labeled this bad, though, because that infrastructure doesn't currently exist. But it probably will. Uh, but it's, it, it may. Really it may. They're trying very hard to make this exist. And then also I like to say we're spaceships garbage. I don't know where this graphics come from. This is preposterous. So the video cameras that are live feeds. Yeah. So one more bad. Uh, you think like it's bad? Are you guys familiar with this episode I take it? Is that what the laughing is about? to ISIS websites to, to just troll them. Uh, and there's actually a, a lot of legitimate things that goes on here. Even though they seem like fake trolling, it's actually very real. He's using like a search engine to find the website that he already knows he's going to use. Like, why would you just turn the website, type, type the website name in? because you have not changed your default passwords or you, or you used a stupid password like summer 2016 or password one. I'm not even making this up. Like this, like it's the reason my job is so boring. Better than 70% of like corporate security is just doing the basic crap that we all know we should be doing, but man, we're in a hurry. And we yeah. all know that you take the same password and you add like a number to it every time you have to reset it. Mm -hmm. well, that's and we expect point. that. And but, then right, right. look your password and we increase the password number by one. If your password right now is summer 2016, you need to change it. Or summer 16. Yeah. To 2017. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? Summer 2017 is not currently my top 10 password guessing list, so you would get around the right So it would take at least uh, three seconds. The other answer to <laughs> here is that um, this is the this is basically the way that Anonymous had busted into so many uh, ISIS Twitter and uh, uh, websites is just by using a password guessing. And a lot of those websites were still using like the default WordPress passwords and stuff. So like, this isn't this is
Um, so, so that there, that like really is a thing, and especially like as a penetration tester, if you're dealing with a particularly like substantially vulnerable client, there's a chance that every now and then, while you're in there poking around, you're going to find somebody else who's poking around who's not your friend. Uh, and so that's a real thing. Um, and uh, but then they started getting into things like screenshots of stuff that's not real, that whole ping thing for like talking back and forth. But I, I do the audible ping. Like, the audible ping. Really awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and that was weird because there's like totally a way of, of talking back and forth between two logged in users on a Linux system. Like that already does exist. Why did you invent something? <laughs> like because it makes a noise, I guess? Because it does ping? Uh, but then they go on to go back and forth and they, they, they talk about it. Part of it. And I'm, I'm just family for time here. Uh, but. Uh, uh, some of these screenshots in here are actual legitimate forensic stuff, and then some of them is just like mindless garbage, like, oh, we're dumping all these files, and all the file names have CIA in them from the home directory who's logging <laughs> users. Like, the CIA, call all of their, all of their stuff CIA. <laughs> they also go from like, oh, hey, there's someone else, you know, poking around in the system to downloading hundreds of CIA files in like, 12 seconds. Yeah, and like these pop-ups inside the command line of these windows that are like, hey, I'll throw this file transfer. Like, that's not how a command line works. <laughs> so that's why Windows was invented. That's not what you're running uh, So like, it, it, it starts, it has like a good foundation, but then it goes into this just garbage, like many Windows hacking BS, unfortunately. It really sucked because like, they could have like, kept the straight and narrow and really still presented it well, but they opted out. <laughs> Uh, so let's get into the ugly, most fun stuff. Um, let's skip that to watch. Just yeah, they didn't do that. Yeah, all yeah. right. Yeah. 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 yeah, all the hacking in this was pretty bad. Stephen King fans, uh, everything in this is bullshit. That's the bottom line. He's not a good technical writer. He is hacking for honest. Yeah. Right. I'd be happy to talk more about this after the fact yeah. if you want some more. Fish hacking. So, <laughs> so it's actually. Zero is our ubiquitous go to, not CSI cyber, because all I love publicity, but all the hacking in Arrow is terrible. Terrible. So let's watch some parallel hacking. Every time I knock on a firewall, I'm going to pop back up. Okay. I might have something to announce so that the FBI gets in their way, so you have to protect it by encryption. If you don't enter your pass, it will have to turn up. How does the device break itself right? There's something that the time is laying out on the side. Can you just what it is at the point? Instead of trying to break from a copy of Can you get yourself working in the first place? You're suggesting as it is with a smartphone, the overload room account, and the access to the device. That is what it's up to. Unfortunately, I have a very much in our list with the Emerald account, so vulnerable. This is a brute force attack. Let me try. You're always such a stick in the mud. Yes. Let's all take hacking advice from a woman whose only use for her smartphone is as a mirror. So funny. Lucy may have gotten her brains from you, but she got her creativity. Making lipstick to lip liner isn't creativity. And while I may not be father of the year, oh, try to pass video games. I recently took a bullet for our daughter. Not metaphorically either, by the way. I mean, metaphor? Is that it's okay? Oh, I know what a metaphor means. Just like I know what abandoning your family looks like. Wait, wait, because I remember not having much of a choice in the matter. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> So you don't have to follow any of this because we can't either. <laughs> 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 Thank <laughs> you. 
whatsoever. There's no way to even track like an IP address of someone's phone based on just there's a telephone also, yeah, call. There's a lot of crazy geolocation in the scene too where they like zoom on a house. Yeah, and as much as I would love to do that in forensics, you can very rarely zoom in on somebody's house based oh, on their IP address. Oh, oh, oh boy. I can move that. Yes. So we can just keep talking over the top. Uh, we got it. The cell signal was on Trojan horse through the first firewall. And this whole thing of having like a bunch of firewall firewalls in a row like this? <laughs> like once you're through one, then you have to get through the next? Like, that is an administrative nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> also, why are they zero percent? Yeah. I'm like, that's not how it's working. Yeah, that's just gonna, that's just gonna be broken. Like, that's not gonna work at all ever. Like, I even like, who's, who's a network admin here? Who's worked with firewalls? Anybody? Like, go set six firewalls up in a row and do that. Fast no, 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 communication like this. Yeah. I dare you. Yeah. I dare you. It's a lot of weird. In a charming kind of way. Check this out. Three yes. dump trucks fell off the trash marker ship this morning. All three left today. No, we're going to go to the end of it, though. Cheers, Zay. The trace of the Indians? It's the, the ultimate size of the spaceship of the, of the year. Ah, there we go. Oh yeah, and so this whole trope of the like keep the car on the line so we can trace them thing, which already doesn't make sense, has never been a thing in telephones. Like before cell phones, it was still never a thing. Like you could either you either definitely knew where it came from or you didn't. There was never oh it takes ninety seconds. Yeah. Like that's never, ever, ever actually been a true thing. Yet we're still seeing this in TV shows like this late in the game. She's calling. Where were you? Hey, hey, babe. Change your mind about tonight? Uh, you know, uh, tonight's still not gonna work. But what about right now? Feel like steaming up your office? Gross. My office. 
That sounds great. I'm uh sort of in the middle of something right now. Really? That's too bad, because I'm right downstairs. Downstairs, downstairs? Yeah. Can you be up in ten seconds? Ten seconds is not long at all. Hang, hang, hang on one second. We gotta shut it down. She's gonna walk in the front door. No. She's lying. Her phone is pinning from Queens. What? Are you? No, what? She's attacking her. Sorry about that. Just taking off my pants. You're coming up. He doesn't like. Yeah, so anyway, like. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I peer dress at WWE. Is that in this one? It's in this one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> based on just a phone call, it's totally possible. You need to be able to triangulate between at least two other cell phone towers, which you need direct access to, which is not something that's granted lightly. Uh, the cell companies are the worst at that. Like even when I said I can't trace an IP address down to a location, if I work for AT&T, it would be feasible, but like most of us don't work for at and yeah, and even the process of, of law enforcement getting access to that stuff is like so drawn out that it often, like by the time they get it worked out, like you're not going to do it while someone's on the phone. That's not a thing. That just doesn't happen. We can actually do it while they're on the phone. I right, you before. are you law enforcement? Yes, I was. Well, I'm not anymore. But <laughs> let's let's, let's talk about that uh, in a bit. <laughs> um, excuse me, because my knowledge is several years old on that. Could you turn down the volume a little bit? Sure. I can't do it without my fingers in my ear. Thanks. Okay. Nice. Like the progress bar for knowing if you're done to get the decryption key or not. And then the cyber news. He's got a backup system at home. Is it a go for launch? Yes. And <laughs> Oh, makes a new slide in PowerPoint. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, Batman vs Superman when he clones the dude's phone at the bar. Uh, that's just Batman magic. Magic. That's not even. This. That's not a thing. Right, so quick run through of honorable mentions this year. candidate theme that we backed out on, but I forgot to delete Vernon Supreme. But it's okay because he's like everyone's favorite. <laughs> Who doesn't know Vernon Supreme? He's, yeah. His platform is, is a pony for everybody. He's the presidential candidate we deserve. He's just not the one that we need right now. <laughs> <laughs> everyone go home and Google Vernon Supreme. There's an awesome documentary that just came out on him. He's been running for president for like ever. His campaign platforms are bizarre and hilarious. Uh, he's the best. He's, he's, he's essentially trolling presidential candidacy and doing an amazing job at it. Vernon Supreme, go for it. So uh, these honorable mentions are mostly things. Oh, I didn't sync. Okay. We don't know how to do Hang on, we're computering. Where's our progress bar? Are good in everything today, but there's so much good in Mr. Robot that it wasn't really worth bringing up in this talk. Like everything, pretty much in Mr. Robot is accurate, and not just the tech stuff, but yeah. the persona. Too. Like I have way too much. We could have done this whole talk based on what's good in Mr. Robot, but 
So just, go, just watch it if you're not. Yeah, I, I have so many friends that are exactly like the protagonist in Mr. Robot like to the point where I have to walk away all the time. Setting up a Kirkwall and Dave Kennedy's social engineering toolkit, like mm -hmm. every tool they use in that show is correct. Yeah, this is this is a screenshot from Mr. Robot. It's a fun show to watch. A good yeah. friend of ours, an amazing guy in the community, wrote this tool for yeah. 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 every one of you. It's why it says it's why it says in here that you should give more hugs. So, he likes giving hugs. Yeah, we know who wrote this, and it's being used in a show. He's a and great guy. Like, uh, and there's not much more to say about Mr. Robot unless you have anything. Like, it's down to brutally honest, like, abuse, substance abuse problems, which we see in the hacking community all the time. It is, yeah, absolutely accurate. Um, the next one, which was good, is it's not out yet. Watch Dogs 2. Watch Dogs 1 hacking we talked about last year was pretty mad. Like, it was like, can I plug my YouTube show? <laughs> I think it just did. Yeah. <laughs> YouTube talking about the bad hacking in watchdogs. Who does Matt Pat's game lab? Or yeah. oh, I think you might be a little too old in an audience. Okay, anyway, keep it moving. So um, the, in Watch Dogs 2, this is a promo trailer for it, and Leslie spotted that he's running this tour called Empire on his phone, okay. which is a like which that. is a critical, like top three to top five tool that I use in almost every single one of my penetration testing engagements. Like and the trailer for Watch Dogs 2 is super boring because all it is is like him with his phone with, like, better, with uh, Empire PowerShell Empire running on it. And we were all like the hackers, the five hackers who actually saw the trailer were like, oh my god, he's using PowerShell Empire, it's amazing. We lost but our minds when this trailer came out. <laughs> Everyone else is like, this doesn't show really the gameplay. This is <laughs> dumb. <laughs> it's funny on his phone! <laughs> Stuff, but we're just like, <laughs> <laughs> so I know the people that actually wrote this, and they're geeking, geeking out about it just as much as anyone else. Like, oh my god, you put our stuff in it. When Dave Kennedy saw set on Mr. Robot, he was geeking out. All of us were like, can you imagine? Like, you wrote a tweet for some hackers, and now it's on TV and in video games because it's yeah. that legit. That's insane. So I'm so happy. Cool. For these I'm guys. excited for Watch Dogs 2 because Watch Dogs 1 hacking was pretty crappy. So obviously, they decided to their game. We laid in them pretty hard. It's so bad. Um, but they were super responsive. Like, yeah. I kind of picked on the game on Twitter, and like a couple of the devs got back at me. And they were like, they obviously took the criticism to heart. I think one of them shot back at me. Sorry, we really did want to include the 650 page hacking guide to go with the game, but marketing <laughs> shot that down. <laughs> That they were accurately using I real encryption mechanisms. The website, they pulled that code off of right there. Um, but they're encryption mechanisms that we know today to be easily bypassed. Yeah. So it's weird that you're making a sci-fi show. So and I'm it's confused. Still I'm using I kind of feel like this might have been like someone in the graphic design department's like intern project. Right. Like, yeah, there's some authenticity. Yeah, we need, we need some we need some code to put up yeah. here. So this is, this is, the screen is on the okay. is on the screen for like a second and a half. Yeah. So yeah, there is a point in the future where you should really spend this belief. Um, and then there's another bad one we've gotten here, which is Tomorrowland. Um, did any of you watch Tomorrowland? Yeah. Um, so if you just see Tomorrowland, it starts with the main character, the young lady is trying to stop the construction project demolition of a NASA site. And she breaks into the build, the, into the site basically by flying her drone on top of the guard shack, par parking it on top, and hacking his security camera so she can sneak in. So like halfway through that, I was like, this is going to be awesome, like because we have friends who do that and they park their drones on top of Starbucks and like steal everybody's internet connections. <laughs> Literally last week had Literally. a friend who was excited because his work bought him a drone for this purpose. And He's you also can see that drone student. right there, one of the commercially, uh, easily, not commercially, but uh, trivially 
available. If you have right money, next. you can purchase it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you can buy the drone and then put the, the free packages on top of it to pack Wi-Fi. Um, yeah, Wi-Fi pineapple. Yeah, this is uh, aircraft, aircraft yeah. on this one. Um, and uh, basically that's totally feasible, but the problem with this scene is that she has like a magic interference button on her iPhone that she gets to like break the cameras. Like, yeah, and it, it was like almost viable until you see what it does. Like if the cameras are just by, based on radio frequency, yeah, you can like set up something to jam those frequencies. Without breaking your drone though? Um, That's going to be interesting. Well, it depends on the frequencies. Yeah. <laughs> but then, like, yeah, the, really the, the cameras just like yeah. lock up. Like the, the, the end result is not what would actually happen. Yeah. So, so they got close, but. Yeah. Um, so that's what we grabbed. Oh, we what do you have the hacker type group outputted? You guys know hacker type group? Yeah. There was some episode of something in one of the options we were reviewing, and I was like, where does this code from? This is a known like SMB exploit. And I was like, I kept Googling, Googling, and I was like, oh, this is the default hacker typer output. And so like, oh, so I'm cranked out some hacker, hacker typer. <laughs> Because <laughs> also, like a lot of like the uh, uh, pen testing firms and the labs and the security operations centers, when they have to do dog and pony shows, when clients come through, you can't have other client data up on your screen. Like you're under all sides of those sorts of NDAs. And so, what a lot of these socks will do is they'll just run hacker typer on their screens, and so that like the C level or sales guy who is coming through will man, it looks like you're doing something. And hacker typer just runs a bunch of garbage code across your screen. Yes, you type. Just do this. <laughs> Like such a yeah, you think it's hackertyper.org or something, like you do it, you, it works on your phone, like it's good stuff. Yeah. We're, at but, uh, yeah. we're at time for this, um, I think we're the last slot here. So, yeah, we're happy to hang out for another half hour, 40 minutes. You know, you guys can understand, you would like your tickets to the next year. Yeah. Um, we do have badges that you can give away to and come grab some. Yeah, we've got some of the weird badges. Um, um, we've got tons of weird swag and stickers yeah, up here. Yeah, so we have the questions. We're going to give you presents. We've got, we've got like, who wants to go ahead and get locked? Oh, okay. So, oh, that guy was crazy. Yeah, so we've got some lock tickets to give away. So, let's talk. What do you guys want to talk about? I was pretty sure you guys were going to bring up um, person of interest. Is it? It, sure, it does a lot of things wrong. Person of interest is where the like, magic mailer that attacked the whole city well, was from. It's supposed to be super intelligence. Which, the Ice Nine. Yeah, it was written by AI. But well, yeah, we were picking on the fact that, that, it, that yeah. integrated universal infrastructure doesn't exist yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the, I guess not super on topic, but one of the things that do really write is that AIs in it aren't super anthropomorphized or personified. They're yeah. unrelatable. They are just computer things that don't have faces. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. It just doesn't look, it's like there's robots around you all the time right now. They just don't look like people. Yeah, if you guys do have to go like catch your next event, so we understand. Just don't, don't be embarrassed. Yeah. Something's so right, something's so wrong. Right, and that's how we end up with the bad category, that middle ground where it's like, well, all these things are right, and then you just screw this Do up. Do we like the bad category? Because I think that's what we talked about. It's yes. like, you got this much, right? This is what you yeah. need to um, I mean, like any questions, like just do ask a hacker, like ask us anything. Right. Well, yeah. two things. One, one was a it. comment. Um, oddly enough, I was in a video game, like, attending a video game writing panel earlier in the day. Guy, one of the guys said he worked in Watch Dogs 2. That was a great coincidence. Oh. And uh, the oh. other thing was a question for, for Mr. Christmas. Um, about the social, <laughs> the social engineering <laughs> aspect. Mr. Christmas is my father. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can call me Johnny. <laughs> Well, you mentioned the, the, like the tailgating types of things. I mean, do, do you have to uh, sort of scout the place ahead of time and dress appropriately yes. and try to imitate like Yes, that? yes, absolutely. That's the other thing. Like, you see all these hackers like personified as like this guy, Mr. Rubin, Elliot, Mr. Rubin, like a mascot. According to the thing out here, there is a something else in here at night. Oh, okay. Yeah, according to the poster. Uh, yeah, okay, so we got a half hour. Thanks. Yeah, thank, yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so like if I show up at like some corporate office as this guy. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get right in. No one sees you. We'd let you in. 
<laughs> no, that's with my camo. Uh, nobody would see me. So yeah, you you absolutely have to case the place. Understand the dress code. If I'm dressed, if I show up in a shirt and tie, and it's a polo and khakis kind of place, that's going to look weird. Like you, you have to blend in with your surroundings in order to look like you're supposed to be there. Be there, and it's always about looking and acting like you're supposed to be there. Because we as human beings, we don't like to say no to people. We don't like to disappoint people. We don't like, and we definitely don't like conflict. So if you see a stranger who you think is not supposed to be there, like you're more than likely gonna be like, well, that's I'm not security. It's not my job to stop that person, but that's weird. And you might go to the person next to you, like, hey, look at that guy. Isn't he weird? <laughs> <laughs> but like, you're very unlikely to actually call it out. Uh, and that's, and in, in, in the same regard, you're very likely to hold the door for that person. Like so, the person uh, you don't know, you're gonna go, and if I'm coming up right behind you, especially if I got a box in my hands, which is a thing I do a lot, like, oh, hey, show the door. Oh, yeah, sure, man. Can you get coffee? So, yeah, yeah. so you want to know the meanest thing that uh, one of the other red teams, uh, when I was working for the DOD, had a, uh, had a pregnant woman that worked with them. Uh, oh. oh. She, it was, basically all she had to do was walk up to any door and say, can I use the bathroom? Oh yeah. Like oh, every yeah. deadbolt would come unlocked. <laughs> and, you know, Is there a bathroom in your there'd be like I can use? <laughs> <laughs> there'd be like three guards offering to carry whatever she wanted. Like, and she just, those three servers? Yeah. <laughs> No, if, if, but the thing is, I mean, you know, that was it, 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 the meanest thing out there. But I mean, you know, it works like a charm, though. It it works. Yeah. Oh, I have tour stickers. And a bad guy's not gonna hesitate to do it. This yeah. is the tour browser we were discussing earlier with right. anonymous live stickers up here. So he, who, if you here wants a brand shiny new DEFCON badge? Who knows what DEF CON is? A, a in, Why aren't she there? A built in deodorant <laughs> for the rest of your con experience. Yeah. That, was, that was being handed out this year at DEF CON. It's a badge it has on the lanyard. It's a lanyard. reminder of your uh, 321. Yeah, and it's got a little travel deodorant and you can just wear it around your neck and hand it to me. I agree. Yeah. Anybody want it? There you go. I, I watched the first one get used uh, at DEF CON. It was amazing. A particularly <laughs> offensive individual standing out by the cab line. And I got took that I go, here man, have some. And then like the recipient was surprisingly responsive, like, oh, thank oh, you. thanks. And like, <laughs> <laughs> cool. like that's like, how we should all be as a society. <laughs> something on my head. Yeah, like the rule of if someone hands you some gum, you're supposed to accept it. Like right. that's the same with deodorant. All right, who's, who's gonna learn how to pick locks? All right, you two, you two are Those first. Those two in the back, oh, they're shot the right up. Yeah, right. you two. They're all excited about picking locks. Make sure this is legal in your state. If you get it from me. Rule number one is always pick, do not pick a lock that does, does not, belong not belong to you. you. And if you do, you. do, don't tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> or anyone. So sort of. <laughs> yes. I have any questions? Uh, go ahead. Um, just playing devil's advocate, it feels weird because I do hate how bad some of that stuff is on TV and in movies, but have you talked to any um, writers, producers at all and said, hey, why does this suck? Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> what I have, I have, because hacking is boring. Yeah, I have several friends who work in Hollywood as, as consultants. Which I don't think is really a valid reason when you look at shows like Mr. Robot and a lot of the good examples that we looked at today where there's, there's some technical stuff that's accurate but it's hidden in the background. It's not a major feature. Yeah, Mr. Robot makes hacking interesting in that it's not it's the not primary really focus of any of the scenes. You don't, I love the fact that my non-technical friends love Mr. Robot. Yeah because the drama is so good, the acting is so good, and the hacking is still presented, and you understand what they're doing via the hacking, and the hacking is real. Every single thing that's on Mr. Robot is real, right down to the actor actually typing what's on the screen. Yep. Those screens are not green screens, they're not added in later. That is the actual actor, like, typing in those things. It's crazy. Um, to, 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 to answer your question more directly, um, I've had friends who have gone in and done consulting uh, for like pilot episodes, a good friend of mine, uh, uh, 
consulted on the pilot of Mr. Robot and then submitted uh, his uh, salary requirements to do the whole show, and that was far beyond what uh, they uh, wanted to give him. Yeah. So, like, he, he gave them tips for, like, I think it was like the first six episodes or something, and then uh, they brought in somebody else later who was much less expensive and much less qualified. And so things started to go south. Uh, you know, all the hacks are still plausible and real, but you started to approach like breaking brand, breaking bad level of, you know, uh, what are the chances that this would all work out kind of stuff versus things that are normal everyday stuff. Season two really fixed a lot of that too so far uh, as well. Um, but uh, it's a matter of that, it's a matter of uh, as a producer uh, or a director or whatever, you're not necessarily qualified to judge if someone else is qualified to be a consultant. And as soon as you've consulted on enough garbage, you go, look, I've been consulting on TV shows for 15 years on information security. I'm an expert in this field. But your resume speaks for itself. Even though you've been making garbage TV shows for 15 years, they're going to go, oh, no, this is the guy you need. So it's, there's a lot of that that goes on as well. Oh, and a lot that's, of that is that's the, for every technical field, though. Sure, absolutely. We have the same, yeah, we have the same comments for yeah. 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 Another, uh, another thing that is you know, kind of relevant here is that like, you look at the, the CSIs and the NCISs, they're not incentivized to be Accurate. authentic. They don't yeah, care. There's my mom doesn't care. Fun. Neither does right. Me. right? Are you going to hire yeah. an expensive infosec consultant to appease the the 0.5 percent of us no. that might watch the show, or are you just trying to like give someone something for grandma to watch at night? Well, to sort of answer the question too, I remember reading this some web page by a military consultant for um, for various movies, and he. He said, sometimes you can approach the director and say, this is wrong, this is what it should be, and they'll say, well, yeah, but we gotta do it anyway to serve the story. The yes. point being that the directors <laughs> and the producers will all say, even if it's technically right, if it doesn't serve the story, it's out. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's totally another fact. And we started doing this panel um, with that in mind. We, what really bothered us was these situations in which thing, things were miseducating people, and the general public was being made, led to believe that certain things were true, which almost might be dangerous to them in certain regards if they believe it were true. And that kind of like just makes us angry about these things. And now like some of this that doesn't really apply anymore. Uh, but yeah, like we, we talked about Black Hat a lot last year in the movie. And Black Hat, which was lauded as like, oh, there's so much real hacking in this, it ended up being a complete dumpster fire. Sam's <laughs> <laughs> um, the fact that Chris Hemsworth, Chris Hemsworth is nice to look at. Um, it, it, and they did that to just make it more entertaining because watching people sit on a keyboard and type all day is just freaking boring. Yeah, but breaking in the building is actually exciting. I mean, like, there's a lot of boring parts to when you do it, like the kind of negotiation beforehand. But, I mean, hacking is still or fun. Casing from the parking lot. I think lot all four of us like our jobs. Just sitting in your car with your laptop off, just waiting. Exciting. Yeah, but there's parts Wait of our jobs Wait for the WPA to crash. Well, I mean, yeah. you know, so saying hacking is boring is a cop out, though, because it's you know, eating can be look boring too. Diner, the movie. It's it's not about the actual. Well, see, of the part of what makes something like Mr. Robot successful is that they don't try to make hack. They don't try to make hacking itself the point of drama. I mean, it is at times, oh. but. They could basically, like later in that Limitless episode, at one point they start having a techno, techno babble moment, and they actually just like sound a siren and they are flashing the words tech talk on oh, the screen. Well. Right? They could do that, and Mr. Robot would still be successful as a show. Because the characters are rich, and they're doing a lot, the, the drama is being driven by those characters. Right, much Hacking greater. is what they're doing. Yeah. Right. Like Mr. Robot could be complete made up garbage as far as the hacking goes, and it would probably still be a really good show to watch. The fact that they make sure that, that all the hacking is real in there is above and beyond, and that's why they're really yeah. 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 Oh, come read the stickers. Yeah. 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 Anything else? You guys want to ask hacking questions in general? Swag. Go from like swag. Hey guys, this is Kit Wessendorf. He was on our first panel two years ago. So if you guys remember, uh, I like to talk about drones and how the FBI uses Cessnas to intercept your cell phones and use that as a spoof. <laughs> yeah, like that's not ten point garbage. So we do a lot of, we also do a lot of outreach, uh, community outreach. So if you guys ever have any questions, if you want to learn about getting a job in InfoSpec or like if you want to run something by us, you can definitely reach out to all of us and see like. Yeah, it's up on Twitter. We got a couple questions back here. Yeah. Uh, as somebody from the blue side, hoping to go to red, uh, no. the top three search or where would they start? 
not CISSP. <laughs> CISSP is a, is a cert for managers who hopefully already know of a lot of things. Um, there's a lot from GIAC, uh, GIAC, the OSCP is excellent. Uh, so from in the GIAC, uh, GCIH, that's incident handling, because you gotta know how to clean stuff up when it breaks, because it will. Um, and then like if you're Windows networking, GCWN is pretty intensive, it's a good course there. Um, God, they have a lot of really good services. Most of the so. SAM stuff is actually Everything good. Everything yeah. is 400 level in SAM history. Yeah. Yeah, SAM's for sure. Um, so, it was, it, this was just kind of goes back to the Mr. Robot thing. But, like, in season one, there's this part where they're in the, the hotel room and the hackers is playing on TV and they, they, they're talking about yes. how it's so much bullshit. Yeah. Well, they're, they're being a little bit meta there because the com I'm, I'm actually watching through season one, so I'm just past it. Uh, the, the comment he makes is that, like, he says something like, right now someone's running a show that's just going to blow all these kids' minds. Yeah. That is the freaking <laughs> yeah. show right there. Yeah. But I think I used that as the intro video our first year was that scene from from uh, Mr. Robo. He's, he's, he's in withdrawal, yeah. Or, or no, no, where it's a like Christian Snyder and he's, like, talking about the cyber spaceships. He's like, look at this. Yeah. This yeah. isn't hacking, and it's actually from the movie Hackers. Who's seen the movie Hackers? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's lovely watching. Like we as hackers love the movie Hackers. hackers. It's just amazing. Yeah. It's so preposterous. Who's yeah. seen Kung Fury? Oh, oh yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. I just had to bring that up. Sorry. Hacking. <laughs> <laughs> You're hacking too much time. <laughs> <laughs> we use that that was, that was our opening video. Yeah. Last year. Uh, question. So. Uh, Alright, so first of all, thank you for the blog, Vic. I didn't say thank you before. Um, I asked this last year, um, and you guys said it hadn't happened yet, but there's a BMW uh, hacking car contest every year. We talked about it yes. the first year you did this. Yep. Do you know the results of this year and or last year? I don't know. They pick no, that kind end. of quiet. Yeah. Like, yeah. They say who wins prizes, but they don't always say what they work for. Gotcha. Yeah, that's part for, of how bug bounties work. For obvious reasons. Is that you don't go public with your finance. The yeah. company compensates you for your they work. They compensate you well. Yeah, and the agreement is that by you taking this money, you agree to not disclose this information. Sometimes for a period of time, sometimes forever. Depends on that particular agreement works. Is it still the case that BMW is one of the only car manufacturers that cares about cybersecurity in regards? I don't want to say I, that. Yeah, that's a... <laughs> That's a hard thing to judge. Both of those statements there are contentious. Do they care? And I, I are they the only ones who care? I would think post G Pack. Like, I would yeah. call the G Pack, like Charlie Miller's G Pack, like possibly the 9 11 of car cybersecurity. And yet they and still are. Well, they're, well, they're still not great, but they were yeah. forced to recall, like, what, four million? Yeah. Well, they, they sent out a bunch of flash drives to users because people weren't bringing their cars in to right. make this. Like, this was Yeah, but it's also news. like sending out a survey, right? 3% response rate would be yeah. good. Yeah. Meanwhile, right. Tesla auto... Cars, Except that this, is, this situation yeah. was, I can take over your car and control acceleration, deceleration, etc. Like, that's like, survey is like, uh, I, I'm not negatively affected if I don't respond to a survey. Meanwhile, like, 60% of people can't correctly identify ads on Google. It, it, that's, there's, there's a thing on it that says ads. The red guy's leaving. <laughs> I'm sure she's very hot. Did anybody notice red guy from... Yes. Uh, I'm no, that was uh, uh, don't, don't, don't hug me. I'm scared. Don't hug me. I'm scared. Oh, okay. I was thinking oh, so oh, I was thinking Sesame Street, the, the Martians. Yeah, yeah. yeah. let's see her. She was a friend of ours. I was hoping she was going to come up here. That was she's actually that red guy from Don't Hug Me. I'm scared. That is not someone we cosplay. The original. So, <laughs> so you guys usually do media, um, yeah. but I heard a, 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 a ugly example on the radio on the way down here. I don't know if anybody else has heard these, the RFID prevention wallet. Sure. Which is fine, like dandy, no, no problem. But the way they advertise with everybody uh, is that they're stealing your medical information and your credit card information from your wallet. They're like, I don't have an RFID you chip in any of this. Some people do. Um, yeah. If you work for the government, you probably do. RFID bank cards. If you work for the military or the government, you probably do. Is that like psych data on it and stuff? Well, I don't know. Just like well, a full-blown yeah, OPM on a car. I don't want to know. Okay. <laughs> there you go. So, yeah, it still doesn't there apply are, to nearly anybody. There any are instances right. where that is entirely possible. You do have that kind of personal information on your Yeah. Oh, you don't. <laughs> not the issuing, not the issuing body. I, uh, I was, and I think I can talk about this now. I was expelled from 
college for exposing that going on within my within my college, where there was, there was uh, way too much data being put on student IDs, and it was very easily accessible. And the company. And even before that, it was smart cards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, right, they were mag stripe cards. Uh, uh, and the company that manufactured the school ended up dropping them as a vendor, and yeah. that company then attempted to sue me for libel because mm -hmm. I caused them to lose that account. But even though I did it to a libel, it was very mm -hmm. factual. Mm -hmm. and yeah. All right, we're, I think we're getting booted out again. Yeah, we have that like yeah. five minutes to get out of here. All right, come, our, come right up, stick the table. We really enjoyed having you guys as an audience. Yeah. Thank you very much.